Just look at all those flowers. It's gone all droopy and you're like, what's going on? It makes so much sense that it would be the flower, but it's not the flower. Hello friends and welcome back to my channel. My name is Emma and today we're gonna be talking about this. So this is a spathophyllum, also known as a peace lily. Peace lilies are one of the most common and popular houseplants, especially among new houseplant owners. And that is just because they are really easy to care for. They are a fairly low maintenance plant. They don't need all that much extra attention. So they work really well as like a good beginner houseplant for all. So they are known for their really dark green, shiny oval shaped leaves and their beautiful white flowers. And even though they are not actually lilies, they're called peace lilies because their white spathes here kind of rise up out of the plant acting as a white flag or a sign of peace. And that's how they got their name. One of the best things about peace lilies is that they are actually one of NASA's top 10 clean air plants, which means they filter toxins out of the air, making the air in your house more breathable and better for you. But before we get started with how to care for this beauty, I just want to say if you like this video, do please give it a thumbs up down below and comment on other plenty things you'd like me to talk about and subscribe for more videos. Let's get into it. These ones really like fairly moist soil. I'd say probably check the soil about once a week in order to see if the top inch or so is dry. And if it's dry, give it a water. And if it's moist, don't let it go a little bit longer before you give it more water because they don't like soggy roots. They don't like sitting in pools of water and overwatering can be one of the leading causes of peace lily death. It's better not to overwater. And instead of sticking to like a strict schedule, it's better to test to see if it needs the water because it's gonna vary depending on like the time of year and how warm it is and stuff like that. You can even just use your finger if you don't have a water meter, stick your finger in the soil. If it comes out clean, there's no dirt on it, that means it needs water. If it comes out with dirt on it, it's probably good to go a little bit longer without. Or, Peace lilies are also really good at telling you when they are thirsty. They will start to droop down, their flowers will go all the way upside down, sad looking. Their leaves will wilt. And that is basically the plant telling you that it needs a little bit of water. And so some people just water theirs based off of when they see it's starting to wilt, give it a bit of water, it'll perk right back up again. If you're new to this house plant and suddenly it's gone all droopy and you're like, what's going on? Try giving it a little bit of water and it should be okay. Though do be careful because if you let it wilt all the way too many times, it might start having more and more trouble bouncing back and it might end up being a bit more of a sad, droopy plant in general, which isn't ideal. Just be careful not to let it droop too much. But I find that that's easier for me to know when to water. I start watering when it's a little bit droopy. They are also a bit sensitive to chlorine in water. So if your tap water does have a lot of chlorine, leave the water to sit out for 24 hours before you water it. That'll let the chlorine dissipate off and it'll be fine for it to be watered with. That's personally what I do. I pretty much always have a watering can full of water sitting out on the counter, ready to go, waiting for 24 to 48 hours, letting things dissipate off before I water my plants. When it comes to light, these beauties are fairly shade loving. They can tolerate like medium to low indirect light, but they do prefer bright indirect light. They will bloom more often if they are getting bright indirect light, but absolutely no direct sun. That will burn and scorch the leaves, causing them to brown and curl, which we do not want. So do not put it in direct light. This one lives about two meters or six feet away from a southwest facing window. So it pretty much gets bright indirect light all day. And I think it is really loving it. It has popped out loads of new flowers. Just look at all those flowers. So, I mean, I think it is really liking it there. Peace lilies can tolerate quite a wide variety of temperatures, but their ideal 
is probably between 18 and 30 degrees Celsius or 65 to 85 degrees Fahrenheit. That is what they like the best, but they can tolerate a little bit outside of that. They really do not like warm and cold drafts. So don't sit them too close to a cold window or an air conditioning or heating vent. They don't like that. And they don't really tolerate temperatures below like 10 degrees Celsius or 50 degrees Fahrenheit. They can't handle that and they might die. So be careful, don't let them get too cold. Peace lilies are humidity loving plants. They do like a good bit of humidity. So in order to give my peace lily that, I do give it a good misting, probably every day to every other day, depending how much I remember. But you can also stick it on a pebble tray or you can get a humidifier. Average houseplant soil is probably the best soil to use for peace lily because it's not too dense and holds some water, but it's also not too dry. The one thing is you do wanna make sure it's well draining and that it's in a pot with drainage holes in the bottom because like I said, it really doesn't like wet roots. So it's better to do that. So, I mean, as you can see, I've got the classic nursery pot in a decorative pot situation. It's just a nice plastic Elho one. Love these. But yeah, it just sits in there and looks really nice. But it gives it a chance to drain its water out and not sit in its roots, which is better for it. They don't need repotting all that often. They do like to be a little bit root bound. You can repot once the roots start to stick out the bottom of the pot. And when you do, you wanna make sure you're only going one pot size up. You don't wanna jump too big. So that's an extra two centimeters or an inch. Bigger. And also repotting is the ideal time to propagate, which you can do by division. Peace lilies don't actually like all that much fertilizer. I say probably fertilize maybe once or twice a year in the spring and summer. They don't like a lot of it. They don't need a lot of it to grow. They are fairly fast growers on their own. So because obviously this plant flowers, I figured it'd be important to talk about their flowers. So this part here, which most of us would actually probably call a flower, isn't actually a flower. It's actually a modified leaf. Actually acts as a hood to protect the real middle bit in here, which is the actual flower part of the plant. Crazy, I know, right? Like I totally would have thought that this part is the flower. It makes so much sense that it would be the flower, but it's not the flower. They should bloom probably about once or twice a year. It's usually in spring, but I've heard that they don't really stick to a very good schedule in that they kind of bloom a bit whenever they feel like it and whenever their conditions are right. The most common reason for peace lilies to not flower is because they're not getting enough light. They do need quite bright indirect light in order to flower. So if yours is not blooming anymore, maybe try bringing it to a slightly brighter spot in your house. Remember, no direct sunlight because that will burn them. But yeah, give it a little bit more light. If your plant is flowering, but those flowers are green or a little bit weak, it might mean that you are over fertilizing your plant because they don't need much. You can see mine are looking a little bit green. It is because I think I over fertilized it a little bit. I didn't realize that they didn't like all that much fertilizer. So I think I fertilized it twice in like the span of two months, which isn't ideal, but it'll be fine. It will live. The flowers just might not be perfect flowers. So if you are also in that boat, try fertilizing less or getting a fertilizer specifically for flowering plants because that is higher in phosphorus, which apparently flowering plants like. So that would be the best option for them. Probably one of the only downsides to the peace lily is that it is toxic. It's not as toxic as a classic lily plant, but it is still toxic to pets and children. It can give you mouth irritation and even more bad gastrointestinal stuff. So don't eat your plants, don't let your pets eat your plants, don't let your kids eat your plants, and it will all be okay. So that's it, that's all you need to know in order to take care of your very own peace lily plant. 
I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up down below and comment on other plants that you'd like me to talk about in the future and subscribe for more videos. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time. Bye.